Now let's look at multiplying monomials and binomials. But before we do that, let's review a few of the exponent rules that we're going to use. So rule one says that x to some power times x to another power equals x to the a plus b power. So if you want to see an example, something like this, maybe we have x to the second power and we're multiplying that by x to the fourth power. This would be x to the two plus four power, which would be x to the six power. Uh, another example of this, maybe we have x times x to the seventh. Well, this x is really like an x to the first power. We just don't write the one normally. And so then this would be x to the one plus seven power, which is x to the eighth power. Or maybe we have something like a squared b times a times b to the fourth. Okay, so in this case, uh, we're allowed to move things around. We have a rule for that I'm gonna talk about in a second. It's the associative rule here, but um, group together the a's. Well, we have an a to the second and an a to the first, so that's gonna be an a to the third. And then we have all of our b terms. We have a b to the first and a b to the fourth. That's b to the fifth. Rule two says that x to the a power raised to the b power is x to the a times b power. And so an example of that, maybe we have x squared and then that whole thing cubed. That's the same thing as x to the two times three. And that's the same thing as x to the sixth. Or another example, maybe we have a to the fourth and all of that is raised to the second power. We can think of that as a to the four times two, which is a to the eighth power. Okay, we are, when we multiply monomials and binomials, primarily gonna use rule number one. Uh, but I put both of them on here just so you remember how this works for uh, these two different cases. We're also gonna look at a few properties. The associative property of multiplication. That's the thing that says a times b times c equals a times b times c. In other words, you can move the parentheses around. And then we have the distributive property. That's where a times b plus c is the same thing as a times b plus a times c. Let's look at a few examples. So how about multiplying monomials? So maybe we have 2x to the fourth times negative 3x cubed times x squared. How would you do this? Well, again, uh, we're going to use the properties we just saw. So we have the associative property of multiplication that says that uh, we can group together these things in any order since they're all being multiplied. So let's group together all of the constants and then all of the x's. So using the associative law, I would get something that looks like the two, and then I can group that together with the negative three, and I can group that together with the one that's in front of here. It's supposed to be a multiplication there, a one. And then I can group all the x's together. So I have x to the fourth, and then I have, from the second term, I have an x to the third, and then from the last term, I have an x squared. So now I can do this, this would give me a negative six. And I can do this, this would be x to the, well remember you add the exponents when you multiply the x's together. So I get four plus three plus two. Four plus three is seven, plus two is nine. So I would get negative six x to the ninth. How about if I wanna multiply negative five a squared times three ab times negative four a squared b? Okay, so these are all monomials multiplying together. And again, I'm gonna use the associative property to group together like terms. So I have a negative five, I have a three, and I have a negative four. And I can group all my a's together. I have an a squared and I have an a. So here's my a squared, here's my a, and then I have another a squared. And then the b's. So there's no b here, there's a b right here and then there's another b there. Okay, so negative five times three times negative four. Well, the negatives are gonna cancel. Five times four is 20, and 20 times three is 60. 
notice that sometimes you look for ways to multiply things together that will make life easier. I, I for some reason, think it's easier to do 5 times 4 and then to multiply that by 3 than to just kind of go in the order that you have here. Okay, and then I have a to the, well, I have a 2. This is really a 1, and then another 2. So 2 plus 1 plus 2 is 5. And then b, these are both to the first power. 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, so multiplying monomials was pretty easy. What about multiplying a monomial and a binomial? Something like this, perhaps. 2x squared times the quantity 3x squared plus 4x. So in this case, I'm going to use the distributive law first. I'm going to take this thing, the 2x squared, and I'm going to distribute it across each term. So first, I'm going to take the 2x squared, I'm going to distribute it to the 3x squared. And then I'm going to take the 2x squared and distribute it to the 4x. And now I can do each of these individually using this technique that I had in the previous problem. These are just multiplying mono, monomials together. So I can group the terms together or group the things that are, are similar, like the 2 and the 3, and then the x squared and the x squared. And then in this one, I have a 2 and a 4. So 2 and a 4, and then I have an x squared and an x. OK, 2 times 3 is 6 x squared times x squared, well, 2 plus 2 is 4, so this will be 6x to the fourth. And then plus 4 times 2 is 8. And I have x squared times, this is really x to the first. 2 plus 1 is 3, so that'll be 8x cubed. How about 4ab squared times the quantity 5a squared minus 2ab? So again, start with the distributive law. So I'm going to take that 4ab squared and distribute it across each of the terms. So I'm going to get 4ab squared times the 5a squared, and I'm going to get 4ab squared times the 2ab. OK. And now I'm going to use associative property to group things together. So I have the 4 and the 5. I have an a and an a squared. And I have a b squared, and there's no b here, so I just have a b squared by itself. Minus, and then I have a 4 and a 2. And an a and an a. And a b squared and a b. All right, 4 times 5 is 20. a times a squared is a cubed. That's going to be a to the first times a to the second. 1 plus 2 is 3. And then my b squared, just hanging out there. And then I have a minus sign. 4 times 2 is 8. a times a is a squared. Remember, these are both to the first power. So one here and a one here. And then I have a b to the second times a b to the first power. There's going to be a b cubed. OK, now it's time to multiply binomials. Consider x plus 3 times x minus 2. And I'm going to look at this two different ways. So the first way I'm going, to, I'm going to look at this is using something called FOIL. And FOIL is just something to help you remember the order that you multiply in. So FOIL, I'll write it up here. FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last. Oops, that's an A, last. So first, so that means you take the first term in each binomial and you multiply them together. So that would be x squared. OK, so we did that. Outer. So you take the outer terms. You take the x from here and the negative 2 from here. Make sure you include the negative. So that would be negative 2x when I multiply those together. Then we have inner. Take the inner terms. The positive 3 and the x, that will give me plus 3x. Did that, and then the last terms, we have a 3 and a negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So we did that, and then we can combine like terms. These middle terms will combine here. Negative 2x and 3x makes just an x. And so we get x squared plus x minus 6. Another way to look at it is to make a little chart kind of like this, like with squares here. So I'll show you what I mean. So maybe this square here can represent the x from each of these, the x and the x. 
And then we have, for the numbers here, this is a beautiful drawing here. So then we have a plus three from the first term and a minus two from the second term. And if you want, you can try and make this, the areas of these boxes here roughly uh, represent the actual numbers. Maybe a plus three, you'd make a little bigger than a negative two. I don't know, it's up to you. But the point is, then we just multiply everything that, uh, well, I'll show you, it makes sense here. So like for this first box, we have the x on top and the x on the side. x times x is x squared. For this next spot here in the grid, we have the x over here and the 3 up here. So we have 3 times x or 3x. Down here, we have a negative 2 times an x. That's a negative 2x. And then lastly, over here, I have a negative 2 and a 3. That's a negative 6. And then we just add everything up. So we get x squared and then 3x plus negative 2x. We saw that over here also is just an x. And then we have a negative 6. So you get the same answer either way. Let's look at one more example of multiplying binomials. How about 2x plus 5 times x minus 4? So again, I'm going to try using FOIL first. So F, O, I, and L, first, outer, inner, last. So for the first terms, I would have 2x times x. That would be 2x squared. So that takes care of that. The outer, 2x times negative 4, would be negative 8x. That takes care of that. The inner would be the 5 and the x, so that would be 5 times x is 5x. That takes care of that. And the last term, 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. That takes care of that. Then I combine like terms. I have a negative 8x and a 5x. That's going to leave behind negative 3x. So I get 2x squared minus 3x minus 20. I could also do this by making my grid. So uh, let's see here, I have a 2x plus 5. So if I'll make this 2x and this an x, which means if I want to kind of make this about the same size as here, this should be, the 2x should be twice as long as the x. Again, if you don't want to do this, that's fine too. The point is just to make the grid so you can see everything that you need to multiply together. And then I will put in, for 2x I have a plus 5, and then for the x I have a minus 4 x times 2x is 2x squared. 5 times x is 5x. 2x times negative 4 is negative 8x. And 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. And then I add all these together, so I'm going to get 2x squared. And then I have 5x plus negative 8x, that's negative 3x. And then lastly, down in the corner, I have a negative 20. And so again, you see that we get the same answer both ways. Now after a while, when you've worked with these, you should get comfortable skipping some steps here and going right from expression like this, going right to that. In other words, uh, kind of imagine multiplying the things out in your head and imagine combining the middle terms uh, to get the final result. It'll just save some time. But for now, if you're not used to actually going through these, Use the FOIL method or this area method here until you get comfortable with it. Okay, one final example. 5m squared n minus 2m times n cubed plus mn. So let's start out with FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. So first would be this 5m squared n times n cubed. So that's going to be 5 m squared, and it's going to be n to the fourth, because I have an n to the first times an n to the third. That's first. Outer, 5m squared n times mn. Okay, so that's going to be 5, and then I have m cubed, because I have an m squared and an m, and then an n squared, because I have an n to the first times an n to the first. That's my outer. Inner would be these two, so I have a negative 2, and then mn cubed. And then finally, last, I have a negative 2m times mn, so I get negative 2m squared n. And then we look to see if there are any like terms to be combined here. I have m squared n to the fourth. I don't see that anywhere else. 
m cubed n squared, I don't see that anywhere else. m n cubed, nope, and m squared n, nope. So that's it, that's my final answer. If I wanna use the grid here, I can also do that. So let's set up our grid here. I'm not even gonna to attempt to try and make the areas anything uh, close to what they should be. I'm just gonna draw a grid here. So the first one I have is five m squared n minus 2m. And then my next term I have is n cubed mn. So let's do these two first. So this will be 5m squared n to the fourth. This one is going to be negative 2mn cubed. This one down here is going to be 5 and then I have m times m squared that's m cubed. And I have n squared n times n. And then down here, I'm going to have negative 2m squared, m times m, and then n. Now I add them up. I get 5m squared n to the fourth plus 5m cubed n squared minus 2mn cubed minus 2m squared n. And you see you get the, the same answer both ways. Now, after you've done these for a while, you might decide that you can just skip right ahead to the final answer without having to do the, the box here. Um, so I've never checked the last L here. Uh, or just going right from this to this. And then if there are any terms that be, can be combined to try and do that in your head. But if you're not used to working with these, uh, I recommend going through all the steps, working out foil or drawing the grid and filling in the grid until you get comfortable with it.